better. All right, afternoon, folks. My name's Phil Gallagher. I run Braven University, a site for legacy death and taxes. Today, we're going to be playing some Bomberman. It's a sort of unique deck in that it's a deck that has Chalice in it, and it's also a deck that Chalice is really good against, which is sort of a, a weird overlap feel. So, in case you're not familiar with how this deck works, here's the 30-second explanation. Oriok Salvagers lets you return an artifact card from your graveyard to your hand with CMC 1 or less. LED produces 3 mana. This ability costs 2 mana. Math wizards out there will notice that this nets you mana when you do this. So Oriok Salvagers plus Lion's Eye Diamond is infinite mana. Once you do that, you can win with a Walking Ballista very easily. Just make a giant space laser and kill them. Or you can use these bobbles. So a Mishra's Bobble will let you draw your deck, or very close to it, so you can win the following turn. And same way for, for Urza's Bobble. There, there used to be another Bobble in the deck that could make your opponent draw their deck out instead, uh, but this version isn't playing that. To supplement this, we have Monastery Mentor, which a bunch of cheap artifacts plus Monastery Mentor equals death for a lot of people. And then we have a whopping eight Karns. Four of them will just make big dumb idiots that will kill your opponent. The other four of them are a Tutor Toolbox, which can get the pieces of your combo, or Mycosynth Lattice to lock your opponent out. Uh, again, he's kind of like a Null Rod, so activated abilities of artifacts your opponent's control can't be activated. So when you have Mycosynth Lattice, it just like straight locks your opponent out. Otherwise, there's a handful of artifacts in the sideboard for you to go and get. Uh, this is a donation deck list, by the way, so Kyle M., thank you very much for supporting the stream. I really do appreciate it. It means a lot. You know, I'm not working, you know, for the next three weeks. Yeah, I'm not working for the next three weeks, so uh, the donation deck lists are a nice little thing to tide me over till I get my next check. All right, uh, the other thing I want to just plug at the beginning of this stream is Min Max blog. Uh, Max Dorshin wrote an awesome... Uh, Ma Max Dorshin is Max... Gilmore, by the way. Um, Max wrote an awesome Bomberman primer uh, slash sideboarding guide. Uh, so I will probably be referencing this throughout the stream. I have not played the most recent iterations of Bomberman that look like this. I played it in the past pre both of these Karns, actually, when the deck was a lot worse. Uh, but I've never played this version. And I've also never played it on Moto. I played this deck in paper. So let's see how it goes. Turn the value down. Really excited for later this week, by the way. We're just a couple of days away from getting Modern Horizons on MTGO. And then it's going to be like the wild, wild west again where everyone's going and trying new decks and, and brewing and slotting new cards into old decks and trying to make new decks and, you know, the world's going to end because, um, I don't know, pick any number of cards. Uh, the new Time Twister's too powerful and Storm will be tier one in the world of chalices and cards that we live in. Um, but you, you, you know how that goes. We have found a match. Still a little loud. What does my hand do? Um, I have a combo piece, a mentor, a redraw. I think I have too much land. I think I'm going to mulligan this one. This is such an average looking hand. I'm going to keep this one. This one's much better. I need another mana source. That is not a mana source. Oh, these are both humans. So that's very convenient. All right. So we need a little, little help here to make this hand work. 
but this hand has the potential to like actually combo off or actually do some broken things with the right draws, where I don't think the first one did. Yes, War has done insane things for Legacy. It's been a very influential set. Uh, Teferi is not as influential as people thought it was going to be. I'm just going to name Human with this again. I know I have Walking Ballista, and that's a construct. But in case I get Wastelanded and this is like a Delver deck, I just uh, I want to be sure. So Teferi didn't see a lot of play, or I guess doesn't see a lot of play. It's sometimes like a one-of in Miracles. It's fine. Some people are trying to slot it into like various combo decks where it's fine. Uh, Narset, on the other hand, is insane and is absolutely everywhere. Like, format changingly good. And the same is true of Karn. Alright, so we're playing against Blue-Red Delver. And, uh... Dreadhorde Arcanist is also insane. I could discard my entire hand to pay for that spell pierce, but I don't think that's worth it. Um, Arcanist is, in my mind, the like sleeper pick from the set. I don't think that card's getting quite as much respect as it deserves. It's incredibly powerful, and I think people are starting to see it now. Yeah, here we go. This is just, like, the best thing you can be doing in fair matchups. Ugh. I need one more artifact for Metalcraft, and then I can cast this. Maybe this hand wasn't as good as I thought it was. Like, I thought we were pretty likely to, like, find a bobble or a land and, like, just get there, but... Maybe my keep was too ambitious. I thought it was good for a six-card hand. Maybe I'm just going to trip over myself and die. Alright, so my opponent has gotten their first free spell. They are getting a Ponder off of the Arcanist. Uh, which honestly should just find a Wasteland. I've chosen a Shuffle. Uh, note there is some neg negative synergy here. Like, the Arcanist is taking cards out of the graveyard, and the Terramander needs cards in the graveyard to be fueled. Alright, here we go. Let's see. Could cast Salvagers, crack LED, return LED, and play a Chalice for one? That doesn't seem awesome. I think this is just, like, ram a mentor out there this turn. You having a braid? That's fine. Oh, sort of quick. Thank you very much. Let me confirm that. Yep, that went through. Bant Stoneblade. Yeah. Donations are going to, like, keep the legacy content churning. I'm not working. It's all in on... Turn two TNN or three mana planeswalkers. I'm, I am game for that. Yeah, so I'm not working. So like I'm, I'm trying to keep myself busy over the next couple of weeks before Latin Academy starts up, and I'm looking to play Legacy. I don't know, four or five days a week, and like really keep the content flowing. And the the donations are gonna what keeps me me motivated and happy and eager and all that stuff. So, 
two, four, there's six cards in graveyard right now. There were seven cards in graveyard. So my opponent may have misplayed by not activating the Terramander, unless they have like another follow-up. I don't know if that preordain is better than clocking me harder. So I can go one, two, three, four, cast Karn. Deal, Lomer Boy. I'm so excited for that card. It comes out Thursday on Magic Online, by the way. I'm sure you know that. You're probably so excited. So I can cast Karn, have two mana, go up to five mana. Uh, is this a turn where I just need to, like, go for an Ensnaring Bridge? It's four plus one plus one counters. So I can take four, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve if they have a bolt. But actually fifteen if they have a bolt because they can Arcanist it. Oh, I forgot what this card did. You're right, it is instant source sorcery only. Never mind. Yeah, it's going to be hard to make these big then. All right, I am not in any any danger. In that case, let's just play a mentor. They can't flash back the abrade with it. Like, let's just play that out. And then if it lives, I essentially have a monk kill next turn. Yeah, Modern Horizons is, like, such a big game for Legacy. This card's so annoying. Like, now I can't play out another Mentor ever until that bolt's gone. Mm -hmm. So 5, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yeah, I just, I just died to this card. That's frustrating. I guess I could have, like, played towards them not having Bolt plus Cantrip. Sure, sure. Like, it's, it's not great versus Chalice. Like, that's definitely true, but unless you're stopping it somehow, uh, it poses, like, an insurmountable advantage over about two or three turns. Like, if you get two or three attacks in with that, like, you're probably not losing the game. You've just accrued so much card advantage. Like, I I liken this card to Jace, in that if it sticks around and does its thing, like, you probably can't beat it after two or three activations. All right, uh, so according to Max, you want to bring in Swords to Plowshares and board out some of your this Karns, uh, Scion of Urza, uh, because they're a little bit slow, um, and you're willing to accept the negative synergy of Chalice on 1 and Swords to Plowshares so that you can go and do your thing. Uh, it, it is. It is absolutely ridiculous in most of the fair matchups. Like, it does disgusting things to a Delver mirror. Like... Like, when you have that, like, if your opponent has Young Pyromancer, and you have that, you just come out so far ahead. Because it's like, attack, bolt your Young Pyromancer, and then every turn after that is like, attack, ponder, attack, preordain, attack, brainstorm. And yeah, like, Lumberboy, that's a great point. It does also enable some weird lines that you normally don't have access to where you get to go and, like, bolt something, attack, bolt something, and you can take down something with up to six toughness. So say something like a Knight of the Reliquary, a Restoration Angel, um, or something else with a big butt, like a Tarmogoyf, that normally can't be removed by red removal. All of a sudden, like, it's on the table to be killed.
So I think the turn the turn before I died there, I should have just like played Karn the Great Creator. Assuming it resolves, I crack LED in response to its activation, and then get Ensnaring Bridge and try to win the game that way. Yeah, so the Arcanist is not good versus everything. And let's talk about that once I do my opening hand here. So I could go land, pedal, right, I'm going to be keeping this hand. That's for sure. The question is, like, how do I keep this hand? Do I go, like, plains, pedal, chalice? Do I go city, chalice? Like, either way, I want to do this. I think since I have multiple four drops in hand, I probably want to lead on the city. But it's awkward. Opponent really needs to force this. Nope. So let's see what they're going to draw this turn. Since they're just blue-red, I don't need to like play around discard by waiting. If they were, say, Grixis, it's an entirely different story. So, what am I doing? I can play this uncounterably and just get it into play, and then use my next turn to just like return a bobble and draw a card. Is that better than just jamming the Karn? I don't think they have Force of Will. Or the Chalice would have gotten forced. Karn can get dazed, Salvagers can't. Karn is a higher upside play. don't have reps with this deck to, like, know what I should be doing. Let's jam Karn. Oh, that just worked, too. That is neat. I did not expect that. Now what? Liquid metal coating in the board would be uh, would be super cute for this exact situation that I'm in. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get an LED here and pass the turn. LED can be used either with salvagers to try and go infinite or with Karn to, like, try and fuel me casting a Mycosynth Lattice. I'm trying to figure out why my opponent kept their hand. I kind of feel like they have to have, like, a Braid in hand right now. Like, a Braid for Chalice would be, like, an acceptable reason to keep the hand.
So I kind of just want to plus the Karn. This way, if Chalice gets abraded, I'm not just losing the Karn to a Bolt immediately afterwards. Okay, that makes sense. Kind of intuited that already. This isn't nearly as bad as it looks for me either, because now if they just go and play a threat, I just get to source the plowshares said threat. Blood of white for giggles. Uh, and I'll play the source of plowshares on my turn to play around days. Guess I can also play around Pierce at the same time. I don't think I want to like go for a Mycos and Lattice win this turn. I, th I think that's not really safe. The Delver's just gone. Would I be okay losing Karn to Bolt? I think so. Like, I can just Karn minus get Ballista here, and then I just have, like, uncounterable Salvager win next turn. I think I'm okay with that. So one thing Max alluded to in his article was that this deck's actually quite hard to play. There's a lot of decision lines that I'm making here that are like clearly walking into or playing around things. And there's a lot of evaluating cards from various angles that has to be done. Alright, so now I just win. I guess my opponent could surgical, and then I don't win. I think that's my opponent conceding. Oh, no. That looks like they're gonna make me do it. Alright, 
Sorry, stream, I'm gonna ignore you for a minute. Hope your lives are doing well. Looks like my opponent is salty. Yeah, as if I'm going to time out at the rate that I'm doing this. I mean, they're not required to concede. thing is that like even if they have something that could like possibly beat me which they don't because they're f6 at this point like what do they gain by doing this uh, I'm pretty sure the answer is like nothing like I'm not going to time out I'm playing very quickly That's not Bomber Man. That's Spoon Man. If I beat this person again, what do you think the chances are they don't concede and they just like time themselves out? 100%? I think it's like 100%. Yeah, why don't I just have tendrils? I could have stopped a long time ago. Why can't I cast tendrils from my graveyard like Ant does? Luckily, I don't think I'm going to have to do this very many times. Because against most opponents on Modo, when I've demonstrated a loop, like they respect their own time enough to not do this. I'm going to do a couple more iterations than I need to, uh, just to make sure I still have enough mana left to like keep this going. If they somehow interact with it.
one of the things I hate about Modo is that this clicking experience for infinite combos really needs to be improved. Like it seems kind of ridiculous given how many people they have working on that program that you can't like demonstrate a loop and say I'm going to repeat this sequence a hundred times. There must be dozens of them! Dozens! Shift just lets you click the same spot over and over again. Oh, that's good to know. Oh, man. I think we're going to get, like, the full salt of, like, go through two minutes of sideboarding again as well. Mm. 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 I'm going to pull up some spoilers. Let's talk about something. How about this card? This one has been the talk of the town recently. So, a lot of people looked at this and saw, like, oh my god, it's Time Twister. And it is, but it's Time Twister that you have to, like, go and jump through some hoops to play. Um, Brian Cook wrote an awesome, awesome article about this card that I highly suggest you, you check out if you are a Storm player. Um, well, one thing that's really important to understand is that it's only Time Twister when it's in the graveyard. As a six mana card, this is unplayable. Like, the only deck that plays anything remotely similar to this sort of effect is High Tide. And, like, that's its own kind of, like, different degenerate thing, right? So, this card plus LED is insane. But what happens when you don't have the LED with this card? This card is, like, medium minus at best. So if you see decks playing this, they're going to need more than just LED to enable this. Like, they're probably going to need something like, say, Faithless Looting as well to, like, dump additional copies of this into the graveyard or to, like, enable the good side of it in, in the first place. Yeah, in something like Faithless Looting, right? Right, Blur Your Face? Like, you need something to put this into the graveyard in the first place. Um, and actually, when I was at the gym hanging out with one of my buddies, um, we were talking about how you could make potentially like a hybrid reanimator storm deck that uses Intomb plus this, or just Intomb for Grizzlebrand, derp a derp a derp a derp, draw a bunch of cards. And I wonder if that's actually the case. Man, if my opponent times out instead of me because like they just left, I'm going to be upset. So this is, like, going to turn into a spoiler discussion stream, I guess, while my opponent is AFK. So, so that's neat. Yeah, monkeys can't cry. That's an awesome point. So when you go and entomb this, or when you, like... LED and then immediately cast this, there's no opportunity to go and surgically extract this card. So this is not going to be particularly vulnerable to graveyard hate, which is neat. Ah, my opponent's back. We can play magic again. All right, what's my hand do? Uh, my hand casts a turn one mentor and lotus petal. I will keep this hand.
Uh, is this card helped by the London Mulligan? I mean, not a whole lot more than any other combo deck would be, right? Like, yes, your chances of finding A plus B combo decks go, or A plus B combo cards goes up, but this one requires a little bit more, right? It's not like Soul Land plus Chalice, that alone gets you there. Like, in order for this to be good, you really need to cast a few more things before you just go off, right? Like, let's say you mulligan to two, and your two cards are LED and this. Like, cool, that gets you out of the mulligan, but does that actually get you anywhere? Uh, questionable. Opponent, please. Like, let's play. Let's play magic. Yeah, opponent's gonna get the good old name and shame on Twitter. I mean, why am I down on clock, though? I'm down on clock because it took me four minutes to combo off, and the rest of the time I talked through my lines while streaming. Like... So, let's try to jam a mentor. If it doesn't work, I'll jam another mentor next turn. Yeah, like there there are enough magic online problems like with the client itself that when your opponent is being a jerk about it, it's not fun. Like, are you, are you gonna, like, counter a Lotus Petal? I mean, there's a lot of cards that are really good from Modern Horizons. Like, I think when Bob posted on Twitter, like, you know, I think he said there was something like 16 different, like, obviously playable Modern Horizon cards. And, like, there's certainly going to be some more fringe ones beyond that. So we're probably realistically ending up with something like 20 cards that we'll see Legacy play from this set, which is, like, absolutely insane. I mean, when you think about it, like, there's, like, obvious power cards, then there's, like, situational cards that are going to be sideboard cards, plus some, like, things that might go and generate new archetypes, 
plus things that are just like redundancy of, of things that are already there. Like, let me let me find the post since like we've got time to work with. Bob Grizzlepuff. Oh, now my pedal resolves. So now what I think my opponent is doing is, like, trying to time me out by waiting random amounts of time in between his actions. That's my new chaos theory. Uh, I'm going to see if the Delver flips first. Because if it doesn't flip, I can just, like, look at a new card. Brainstorm. Um, I'll look at the card that's there now, then. A young Pyromancer. Well, that's good to know about. So if they just have a bolt for my mentor, it's not that bad for me. Oh no, they don't have another land. Neat! So what's a card that I'm excited about that nobody else is excited about? The blue-white sword is the answer to that. Unquestionably. Like, I am super hyped for that card. No one else thinks it's good. Alright. So I can go and play as Salvager. Does that matter? So I can play, if I play Soul Land, I can go 1, 2, 3, 4, float 1 mana, Salvager, pedal, return a pedal or a bobble, play, hit in. I think that's worth 2 points of life. Ah, oh, now, now they concede quickly. <laughs> After wasting so much of their time, they're quick to concede. I guess I'm thankful that they didn't just, like, sit there and time out and make me talk about spoilers forever. But, salt, 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 salt. Rob, I don't even think you have to make the proliferate matter. I think if you view that sword as protection from damn near everything miracles can do and put two plus one plus one counters on your creature every turn, I think that's fine. Let's get some information before I make any decisions about this turn. This is kind of neat. A lightning bolt. Well, against Lightning Bolt, I think Chalice of the Void on turn one is better than Monastery Mentor on turn two. I've done it. I 
I mean, you can't literally hit every card. Alright, so we're probably playing against ants. That's probably not a mistake. That's probably them just trying to, like... Oh, this is good. This is good. I need one more artifact for Metalcraft. That's that. Sorry, uh, to finish my thought, that's probably them trying to get Hellbent or closer to it for, like, Infernal Tutor reasons or trying to get closer to Threshold for Cabal Therapy. Or not Cabal Therapy, uh, Cabal Ritual. Oh yeah, Agate, you're right, you're right. I was just counting artifacts, I didn't think about my artifact land. Oh yeah, you're right, I did reveal a bolt, so... I guess they're a Grixis controller, Grixis Delver deck? Probably Delver if they conceded that quickly. Yeah, so maybe them putting something in the graveyard is edging towards Gurmag Angler instead. Uh, let's let's board like it's Delver and be super sad if I'm wrong. Cavern, Petal, Opal. Opal can't produce mana unless I get another artifact. If I get another artifact, it produces mana, and then where am I going with this? I'm not sure that this hand is good enough to keep. Okay, I think this, this hand has problems. What do I want to draw to make this good? An artifact land is great. A zero cost artifact is great. Maybe I'm supposed to keep it. Like, the thing is that if I mulligan, I'll just expose myself further to discard. Alright, so land is great. Um, I don't think I actually want to play anything here. I think I just want to play planes and pass. It's possible that I want to play the Lotus Petal. And or the Opal out. But I think I can afford to wait. Playing the planes here is slightly awkward if my next draw is a soul land, because I'd like like soul land plus cavern to cast mentor uncounterably. No, we've dodged to him. Hmm. Welp. I'm gonna make me a little buddy. Like, let's just discourage, like, Delver slash Young Pyromancer shenanigans, and if we eat a bolt here, For, for two mana, I made my dis opponent discard a card and lose one life. It's no hand to Torok, but it's pretty okay. You 
know, if we can just keep removing threats, it's not all that big of a deal that I'm stuck on mana. Like, as the game goes along, I'm going to draw into mana, and then these cards will take over the game. I'm not sure what my opponent's sitting on pre-brainstorm. So we saw Ponder into Thoughtseize into Delver, and then no creature play. So they presumably have like some counter spells or something. Oh my god, am I gonna get a counter spell for this bobble? You got it. You got it, uh, Bing Dujun. You got it. I, I accept this trade. <laughs> now, if they have days and they like make me look like a big idiot later, like, so be it. Uh, they didn't know about the second Opal, right? So that may be a much more reasonable play on their end than my end. And I'm not going to cash in this opal now. Or, sorry, I'm not going to cash in the bobble now because doing so uh, potentially will turn off my mox opal if they remove my ballista. If they tap out for, like, a true name or something like that, I'll become much more willing to, like, get rid of my bobble. A delver. They're, like, playing Delver into my Ballista. Interesting. Like, I guess they're offering a trade. And I think I'm just gonna, like, take a draw this turn. Hoping to hit a land. Did not. So they brainstorm, so the Delver is going to flip. Let me go ahead and trade with it here. Because I really have, like, Karn plus two other cards, so I feel like the one-for-one -one trade very much favors me. Yeah, I could have pinged after getting the one in. 100% agreed. Like, misplay on my end. They have a wasteland. They chose not to play. Take a look at the top of that library there. And a daze. They have a wasteland they chose not to play. I probably now have a cavern of souls that I'm going to choose not to play. I really thought I was going to get an artifact back to replace the two that I got rid of. Uh, that was not the case. So now I know my opponent has Days and Wasteland. So let's play out the Cavern on Human. That will bait the Wasteland.
kind of just want to sit tight for a turn. Like, if I play this Mentor and they daze it, I have to lose my Pell. Which I don't love. Like, I don't, I don't want to trade one for one with this daze. I want to invalidate it with some stupid zero-cost artifact. There's no pressure on board, so I have, I'm not incentivized at all to, like, just throw cards away. So similarly, I think I'm just going to make a land drop and pass the turn, because otherwise I end up in just, like, the exact same spot that I was in the previous turn. That's fine. Like, I, I think I have the end game inevitability here. You don't have pressure. Ah, there's pressure. I'll be a sad boy if he just has, like, infinite wastelands in hand. So, a note, I know that I'm playing this into a bolt that is on board, but I would rather him bolt this. Oh, he just has another one. I would rather him bolt this than cantrip. Oh, he's taking a thought seize. Yeah, I don't know. I guess that's fine. Alright, come on, any zero-cost artifact. Um, I guess, like, technically that does things. I'm really tripping all over myself this game. If I go and play this Karn here, I'm gonna lose this city. And my Lotus Petal to the Days. Um, but I don't think I have a choice. This is so much more pressure than it looks like. So they know my hand is just full of Karns. If I were them, I would have really considered dazing the Karn so that I pay for with my Lotus Petal and then Spell Piercing. So that like you trade two for two while you're just like cantripping and refueling. Yeah. So for anyone who earlier was curious about, like, why I'm so terrified of this card, it's this. And, like, God forbid you have multiples. So my opponent still has the Days. Which means that if I play a Karn, I just lose it to the Days, which I can't really afford. But I'm also just taking 5, 6, 7, and a potentially 6 more. I, th I think I'm just, like, effectively dead. I need to, like, combo off or something. Is that even possible? Like, I don't think it's possible for me to win this game. Uh, somebody on Twitter posted a link to, like, a judge blog post about that, like, Urza's Bobble interaction. I didn't actually read the linked article, but there is, like, a judge statement on how that works. So there's six from Lightning Bolts. So I am dead on board if my opponent does things. Force of Will. Oh, that, that counts as things. Uh, 
And I, I will assume that my opponent knows enough to, like, bolt me for lethal. I'll, I'll give them that much credit. Was it Bob who posted that? Somebody was asking earlier today. I'll try to find it in between rounds. Keep. Uh, rather than give up my city, I'm going to give up my Lotus Petal to Chalice on one. I've done it. And again, I think I'm just going to take my time. I don't think I need to, like, city walking ballista on one or anything like that right now. I've got a few turns. So kind of note with these baubles, a lot of times if you're playing against a discard deck, you want to crack them on your opponent's turn. That way you get to, like, play around discard going and taking your uh, sweet cards. Alright, so they have a lightning bolt on top of library. Um, would I want to walking ballista for one? I think I will will walking ballista for one. If they daze it, like, I literally don't care, and if it makes it around to my turn, I can start pumping mana into it, and, like, try to get it to three counters so I can play around in Arcanist, because that card is too strong. Full Degenerate? I don't know that I'd say full Degenerate, but, like, at least partial Degenerate. Have I done it? Have I won the game? I have won the game. Good guy, or girl, opponent, for conceding to me when I had the infinite combo so I didn't have to click through it. Really, really appreciated. So, we're up 2-0 in matches. I don't feel like I've played particularly well. Like, I think I've made some, some obvious and some not so obvious mistakes. I've tripped over myself a little bit, but like, the deck is still very strong. Oh, and Zach, are you coming up for SCG Con? Like, I'm in, am I going to see you this weekend? Awesome. Um, let's... We should get dinner or drinks or something. I should, uh... I should take you somewhere good. Well... Maybe we don't want to go to somewhere good. Like, we, we've got our choices. Like, we can go to Lucky if we want, like, fancy craft cocktails. Otherwise, you know, we can just hang out at my place and drink a bunch of beers or something like that. Alright, so what do we got here? I don't really have anything. Um, I'm not sure that I'm supposed to keep this. Yes, I think I'm going to GP Atlanta. Uh, let me talk about that in, in just a second after I evaluate this mulligan. I think I sh I'm on the draw, though, like... 
am I happy with this if I get a soul land? Like, not particular. Uh, mulligan. Keep. Bobble? Bobble's a redraw plus information plus potentially enabling Mox Opal. Yeah, I'll talk with that. Yeah, so uh, paperwork's not signed yet, but I'm pretty sure that I'm going to end up moving to North Carolina. Humans? DNT? And so I think that that GP is actually going to end up being very, very close to me. Um, the, the place is Mooresboro, which is near like Shelby and Asheville. It's about an hour away from Charlotte. So I'm on like the southern edge of the state. So if I go and put this chalice on one, it stops source the plowshares, future vials, not mom. It's just like so devastating if they have flicker wisp and they flicker wisp this chalice later. Alternative, all right. So like, let's go ancient den, mox opal, urza's bobble. I, I should probably just like Karn next turn. I'm gonna do it. This is risky. I also probably should have waited on this bobble to like go and see if they wasteland me because they like they could waste oh no they can't take me off metal crap with wasteland. So this isn't actually so bad, right? So like I go, yeah, yeah, boingy boingy boing, yeah, 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 yeah. I've done it. I've made a big dumb idiot and invalidated two mana worth of my opponent's turn. Yeah, so um, I'm looking at a place called um, Thomas Jefferson Classical Academy, um, and I've been offered the job, and I've like basically accepted. I'm just like waiting on documents to physically sign. Uh, re really excited about the place. It's gonna put be put me in a good location for magic. Like, there's two shops locally within like. Oh wow, they're they're giving that one up. <laughs> that was a triple Thalia. Like, single mom and two lands left there. That was, uh... Ouchie. That's rough. That was a, that was a very bad hand on, on their part. Like, it was a good hand to keep, but, like, considering the texture of the matchup and the fact that I had that, like, singleton Caracas, that was, that was really rough. All right. So, they, Max says, I want Swords to Plowshares, Disenchant, and Cast Out. That makes sense to me. And I don't want Chalice. That really makes sense to me. It being flickered is devastating. And I can trim a Petal and an Opal. That all makes sense to me. And we'll leave a Ballista in the board as a tutor target, like same with the bridge. That's why we're not boarding that in, in case anyone is curious. Yeah, and when we're on the draw, like, Chalice is so bad in the first place, right? Um, I will I will keep this hand. Like, we've got three lands, so we're not super susceptible to Wasteland. Um, I don't love this hand. But if they're on a slower start, I think it's going to be fine. I can go planes, 
opal, and I'm, I am just going to like play these things out for LED reasons. So next turn I have one, two, I have three mana next turn. I may or may not end up cashing in this bobble. Like, I'll, I'll think about it. I really want to draw Solan and, like, play Karn and then shut off their Aether Vial. Because I feel like I'm in such a good position if that happens. Alright, so they have just made a land drop and they're going to port me. So now I want to get to 4 mana. Uh, that's very important. They're going to take me down to 1 mana. I'll play a land, get up to 2 mana. I think I leave this bobble in play. Like their, their port buys one turn. Oh, they did not port me. What? Is that an error? Or do they have... Disenchant? Containment Priest? Very confused. It sucks that these are slow trips, so I can't just like replace one of these right now. What do you mean we just win? I just I have three starting mana. Like, next turn. Next turn's great. Uh, this this is an LED, not another, like, art, regular piece of artifact mana. <clears throat> yeah, we, we were on the draw, so... Which one of these is top of library? This is top of library. I'm gonna go ahead and do this one now. Palace Jailer, that's good to know about. I guess I should also be thinking about Spirit of the Labyrinth technically, and considering my lines. I didn't do that. All right, Daddy wants soul land. Those aren't soul lands. We'll get there. We'll get there. The other thing is, they could have had Swords to Plowshares last turn that they left up. Could have, like, left it up in fear of a mentor. We'll see what they decide to do this turn. I think it's very clear that my hand is like clunky and full of four drops, so I'd just like probably double port if I were them and just like attack for one and then like use value off the vial. But they may want to like keep up the Stoneforge activation to put more pressure on my life total. Like it really depends on what the texture of the rest of their hand is like. All right, so I 
This is sort of interesting. I can cast Karn. Yeah, if they don't have Plow, I can draw my entire deck. But, like, the downside of them having Plow is so huge. I think it's better... The, the thing is that, like, if I let them tick the bile up to four, then I do need to worry about, like, Palace Jailer on Oriox Salvagers in the future. I think I need to Karn. This is real hot if they don't have batter skull, by the way. So now what? I, I can just like get bridge. And then Karn can't die to batter skull. Like it slows me down a lot. But, like, they don't have another white source for a Flicker Wisp currently. I think that's very good. Uh, Bridge doesn't get flickered. Like, they can't put it in, and they don't have another white for it currently. And they did not put anything in with Stoneforge now, um, which seems to be a mistake, even if it's not going to do anything. Getting it in play so that if you actually, like, counsel judgment this stuff seems pretty big to me. I make it through this turn without my opponent casting Council's Judgment, I will cash in this bobble because I will still have three artifacts afterwards. Alright, you showed me the Palace Jailer again, but you're not even playing. Have you given up hope? Yeah, I'm, I'm quite confused. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna operate under the assumption that my opponent is a newer DNT player, like to start off with. But then even then, like, what's going on? Three eight Dervals and a Jesse. That's what I got. What do you got? Like, Source of Plowshares is somewhat likely. So if I play this Mentor out, I'm kind of just expecting it to die. I kind of just want to, like, minus get a Walking Ballista, get a 2-2. Two -two. I don't even know that that's good. Like, I can minus get Spyglass and shut off for shot and port. I like that a lot. But I think I just want to keep my hand empty. Like, if they don't have swords, this is just, like, such a good play for the future. And then I'm just gonna like tick Karn's loyalty up. Yeah, okay. That's fine. So now I can minus two turns in a row. 
So the first minus can be used to shut off Rashadden port. The second minus can be used to get Microsoft's lattice and win. Actually, I guess I just have six mana now. So if I draw anything that I can play, I'm just in great shape. Oh yeah, they're going to port me. So if I draw a land, I can just get the lattice and win. I did it. Yep, they have they have seen the writing on the wall. GG. So I think game one there, like they had a hand that lined up poorly against mine. But game two, I definitely think they could have been more in that game if they made different decisions. <laughs> they should have rot a bridge so you can still attack planeswalkers. Hey, let's not get carried away now, got little laggy. This like bridge carn LED shenanigans. It's sweet. So we've got SCG Con coming up this weekend. Pretty sure I'm just going to play D&T in the main event. Although, part of me just wants to, like, play around inside events with, like, Blue Red Delver or something like that, but... The, the EV on the Legacy event is pretty good. Like, the top 8 payout is insane, and, like, if you top 16, you double your entry in credit. Like, I'm pretty happy with that, so I think I'm going to play that. I'm, like, not as practiced as I would like to be, but, you know, so be it. No, I don't have anywhere near enough reps with, uh, with Bomberman to be confident in playing it in paper. Like, Moto's pretty forgiving in that, like, it reminds you of all your triggers and everything. But it's pretty easy to, like, space out, and, like, your opponent goes to their draw step, and you're like, wait, I needed to draw a card. Uh, crap, you missed it, but... You know, that that sort of thing. I don't, I don't think I have enough, anywhere near enough reps to, like, be comfortable playing this. One of my previous roommates owned Bomberman. The deck's, like, surprisingly expensive. Who do I get to turn one Karn? City, Opal, Petal, Bobble, Bobble, Karn? Hell yeah! Keep. Yeah, LED, City of Traders, Ancient Tomb, Karn, more other Karn. Oh man, now I can play Karn around days? That's even better. Uh, and I will do so. I'm gonna start out looking like Storm. Oh man, they're f 6 Glorious. Uh, if they're F6, that means I should just play Cavern.
And so I won't sacrifice these baubles now because they, well, I guess I should not auto yield, um, because they represent additional damage for my construct. Look, I made a turn one Karn, and if that's not good enough, my opponent deserves the win. Like, if they're Ant and they just go off, or if they're Show and Tell and they get me, like, I accept my death. I like my opponent's island. Is that, what was that, Shadowmore Island? Oh, come on, Thought sees me. Thought sees me! Do it! Do it! Yes! <laughs> Uh, yeah, it is It is looking an awful lot like Storm. So then, like, that begs the question, am I supposed to crack the bobbles to try and find a chalice, or am I just supposed to, like, try to kill them in two turns with artifact-based damage? If I minus again, I hit for five, and I make ad nauseum very much worse. But if I hit a chalice, it probably becomes like they literally cannot win the game. Underground Sea. I'm gonna I'm gonna look again at that underground sea. I liked it so much the first time. Alright. So. Yeah, as long as I redraw one artifact, I have Metalcraft again. Or, like, I can just, like, Karn Minus and have Metalcraft as well. Um, am I just going to Goldfish them next turn? So if I Minus, I can attack for 4. That puts them to 12. And then I will have eight. I would need two cards to cast to kill them. Or no, I would need one card to cast to kill them. All right, that's fine. And also, I didn't need to play the city. I could have just played Cavern of Souls because I'm going to minus that, and that turns my Metalcraft back on. All right, now I do just have them dead on board. Or no, 12. They're dead on board if they fetch. I have 11. So I need to hit a spell either from draw or Karn to kill them. Or they need to fetch. Oh, wow. Well, I mean, that will, that will do. Bobble and Soul Land. So they give us soul land. Sure, there is, there is the world where they are just playing Grixis Control and not Storm, but it feels an awful lot like Storm. I'm going to board for Storm, and if I'm wrong, I'm probably only going to be, you know, two or three cards boarded out wrong. All right. Amp slash test. So I'm supposed to board out two of these and board in 
a walking ballista, and a Tormod script. The idea being that you just want to have the possibility of comboing off faster. If they're if they were Grixis control, how oh, am I supposed to sideboard? If they're Grixis control, I'm just supposed to board in a cast out and out a Mox Opal. So it's not like if I board wrong, I'm boarding all that wrong. Like you have so many cards dedicated to the core of this deck that you don't actually tangle that much. Uh, this is a Mulligan, like no matter what deck my opponent is playing. Like I can turn one salvager, but I have nothing else going for me afterwards. Brrr, keep. Land? Land's good. Yeah, again, still still feels like storm. I'm gonna have Metalcraft on turn one. One bottom, one top with the preordain. So you go. Yeah. Yeah. No, I uh, I I want this Tormod script in play. I'm gonna hold the bobble though. So next turn. I can go Mentor plus Bobble. Um, the only way I'm punished for playing out the Opal, well, not the only way, but like the primary way I'd be punished for playing out the Opal is if I draw a Soul Land. Am I going to get him? Am I going to be wrong? about this being Yeah. Let's find out. Oh no, I was right. Dark ritual resolves. The, th the thing is that if I draw Soul Land, I'd probably just want to play Karn, right? Because it just like shuts off the artifact mana. Then I'd have artifact mana and graveyard covered. Alright, uh, non hellbent infernal tutor. It's an LED. Yeah, it's it's very possible I might get stormed out with no graveyard here. Cabal Ritual is just for five in graveyard, so that's just plus three mana. Uh, so that occurs. Lotus Petal, yep. LED, yep. LED, yep. So do you just have empty as your last card? Go on. What's the Stormcast? Stormcast hiding behind this guy. Stormcast just seven. Uh, are we at Infernal Tutor Chains for the win? So six total mana. So they can. No, they cannot kill me with tendrils, right? Or no, I must have miscounted a mana somewhere. They can kill me with tendrils. All right, good job. They they beat me through crypt on turn turn one there. Good stuff. So I'm just gonna whack the submit button. We'll leave the the one crypt in the graveyard as a tutor target for Karn. Uh, we'll keep this. We get to produce a turn one chalice of the void. Although. And it might just be producing turn one, two Chalice of the Voids. So 
So I can go den petal chalice chalice save an opal for two turns down the line. No, I probably need this opal in play as another mana source. So I can go den So let's go den, petal, opal. Now I can chalice on one. And I think I should wait. I did save the petal. I think I'm going to wait and then chalice on two, actually. I think it's harder to win from there. And then, like, I don't put myself in the situation where I shut off my own zero drops. Oh, you mean save it in hand? Yeah, 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 you're right. That sounds about right. All right, uh, we're 4-0. I'm going to take 30 seconds and run to the restroom, and then we'll go into our last round here. I will be right back. Good afternoon, folks. My name is Phil Gallagher. I run Thraven University, a site for legacy death on taxes. Uh, we're currently 4-0 with Bomberman going into our last round. Um, really happy with how the deck's performing. It's very good. Um, I've definitely made some errors, but the power of the deck has certainly carried me through. Really happy with uh, my summer vacation thus far playing a decent amount of Legacy, uh, start playing some Dead Cells, that game's really fun. Um, been trying to work out a little bit every day. It's been really nice here in Roanoke, so I've been like going out and like going for a run while listening to like an audiobook or a podcast or something like that, and it's just been really relaxing. Doing that while, uh, slowly chipping through my to-do list of things that didn't happen through the school year because everything was crazy. Life's good. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to get better about it because I'm, I'm really good about working out during the summer 
and then like the school year starts to get crazy and hectic and and like i fall out of it but like i'm trying to do at least a little bit even if it's just like half an hour i'm trying to do at least something every day and i've been succeeding so far you know so like right now i've been listening to like an hp lovecraft audiobook i got like his entire like complete works as an audiobook it's like 50 something hours long got it for free on audible so i've been working through that you know in half an hour chunks at a time while working out or something like that and that's been really nice other than that i'm starting to do some stuff around the house here um you know some preemptive cleaning and and such because i'm probably gonna end up moving at like the end of july um so rob academy starts up on the, the 21st is like the the day the teachers go down and then it starts up on the 23rd and then it's like the three weeks from there so like for the next 20 days i'm not working so it's going to be a lot of like legacy and video games and like all the things that like i wanted to be doing and didn't have time to do like tomorrow i'm gonna get like a state inspection and oil change like meeting up with a friend for lunch on wednesday it's it's like so nice to have time to do things because because during the year like i probably stretch myself a little thin in terms of time <laughs> Yes. So ha happy birthday, Nick Her. Uh huh. I hope you enjoy your birthday, and thank you for the bits. My birthday's coming up. My birthday's the twenty third. All right. So I'm one mana away from producing an early Karn. I'm lacking something to really do though like even if i draw a like a petal would be great an opal would not be great i think i'm gonna ship that i don't know if that's crazy or not uh, so led salvagers like i need something to win with that'll do all right so now i'm hoping that my opponent is like not a counter spell deck Technically, that's what I asked for, right? So I can't win this turn. I can make three mana. So if we don't get Wastelanded, I've got it. But I need to assume that I'm going to get Wastelanded. In which case, this might be my play. I don't see any reason to wasteland me at that exact juncture. But you can make that same decision on your turn after you've drawn to see if you have a two drop that you want to play. Bayou. Alright. <laughs> they didn't even want the temptation of not wastelanding. I guess that's true. Maybe they'll think I'm steel stompy. Chalice on zero is quite rude. Quite rude indeed. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, it is. It is looking like it might be loam. It could also be like a depth deck or no, no. It's got chalice. Like it's got to be loam at this point, right? <laughs> Things I deserve this and also this. Good call. Good call. Like I'm still not in that bad shape, right? Like I need to draw another land and then I have a Karn, or I can draw a Mentor and I can just like start turning idiot side, like, zero drops into idiots. Yeah, Chalice on zero is so good against me. So good against me. Um, do I want to city? If I city, it means that ripping any land allows me to Karn. I think that's where I'm at. I'm super mega bone, by the way, if my opponent goes and, uh, like, gets a life from the loam off this Sylvan Library. Yeah, so remember in my deck tech where I was talking about how, like, we're a Chalice of the Void deck where Chalice of the Void is also good against us? This is exactly what we're talking about. Press F to pay respects to my mana base. Maybe this mentor will get there for all of the damage. Never mind, it doesn't have to. Uh, the land that my opponent chose was 100% uh, correct in my mind. We just happened to rip another soul land, which was super great. Uh, and so the reason I'm making a construct is to try and minus minus so that the constructs become bigger than two twos. Because that's very, very important here for punishing fire reasons. Like, my opponent has a Sylvan Library and a bunch of cards in hand. I, uh... I don't know that we're favored at this juncture. Liliana. Choosing to plus? Hot damn! <laughs> I'm so happy! I have so many dead cards. I don't think my opponent realizes that I'm just gonna like minus this Karn again. Like, they have to know, right? Right? So if I cast this Chalice for one, I can just kill the Lily with just this and sneak in one more point of damage here. It also just like grows the Constructs up. It wouldn't actually accomplish anything, but I think it's fine. Chalice on two would be really good, but I think I'm really far from making that happen. Like, I think my way to win is to kill my opponent before this game goes long. Because if they find a Wasteland, I'll never get to real amounts of mana. If they find a Punishing Fire, like, my board gets worse very quickly.
extremely pedantic thing to point out, but I think you want to discard the bobble instead of pedal in case your creatures don't work out, and then you can draw another soul in and carn the great creator to kill chalice. Hmm. Wouldn't I want Bobble in that case, though? Because, like, if I have the Karn, then I've already cast it, right? And then that destroys it, and I'd rather have something that replaces itself than mana. What's the other card? Just a Plains. That's good. But it could be that I want the guaranteed white source. Like, I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I, like, I wonder if this card has text at this stage of the game, though. Like, if I get two Kerns in play, can't I just, like, handily win without it? Alright, so that was a check to see if I have more than one planes. I do. Alright. Uh, I did not think we were going to win that game. Like, our, our opponent must have, like, flooded out pretty bad. Like, they had Sylvan Library, too. Like, I almost feel bad for opponent. I got super lucky with that, like, secondary soul land draw. Oh no. Max's article doesn't tell me what to do. I have to think about sideboarding on my own. Uh-oh. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. The Liliana play was was rough. I, I didn't understand that. So I could see myself wanting a Crypt. I could see myself wanting Cast Out for Planeswalkers. I think I want to leave a Crypt and a Sorcerer's Spyglass in the sideboard to 2 through 4. Same for, like, Ballista and LED. So I think all that stuff wants to stay there. I probably need to board in my Disenchants for opposing chalices. So my chalices are bad against them. Like, you can put it on two, and that's fine and dandy. But I don't know that that's the game that I want to try and play. This is, because, like, if you look at how many other 4-mana plays we have, I don't know that we need, like, 16 4-mana plays. I'd almost just scrap the Salvager plan, given that we bring in Leyline. You can just win with Karns and Mentors. Sure, but then what would I be doing instead? Like, keeping Chalice in for Chalice on 2? Eh. Like, if they mold a ley line against me, I'm, I'm happy with that. Like, if they have a natural 7 that, like, happens to have it in there, like, so be it. Chalice on 4 stops ley line. Twitch chat, as usual, with the high-level plays. Uh, I'm going to keep this hand. I don't think it does anything quickly, but, like, we, we have the possibility of a turn 3 Karn and maybe something so sooner with another piece of artifact mana. Or not not necessarily artifact mana, with another artifact. Ugh. I guess it's to be expected though, right?
So I wonder how aggressively my opponent mulligans for Chalice. I was probably supposed to cast Walking Ballista on one there, but I just have six through my turn. Well, like, I played a land, but, you know. You're just going to, like, play a knight? I don't know that that's better than just wastelanding me. Really wish I had that Ballista in play now, by the way. I can Karn and make a 3-3, three, three, but they'll just like wasteland me. They'll have a 4-4, four, four. so if I Karn minus, it's just making a chump blocker. Yeah, I don't know what their hand is, but I think their play was just like wasteland me. Like, really needed to play that Ballista. If I had the Ballista, the Ballista could chump block this turn instead of this Construct token. And that's a big deal. Yikes. Well, this is probably why they didn't wasteland me. If they don't have another natural land, that makes a lot of sense. So I think I need Disenchant in a hurry. Hmm. Excuse me. Lomer Boy is appreciating the, the post-combat maze of if they could have wastelanded me as well. Like by end step, or not, sorry, end of combat, wasteland their Knight of the Reliquary after doing damage. I have no business being anywhere near this game. Okay, they they did it this turn. They they just missed it last turn. That's fair. Oh my god, you're not wastelanding me? But why? Like, you're letting me stay in this game, friend. <laughs> if I win this one for a 5-0, let the record show I did not deserve this. <laughs> Oh my god, you're not activating the knight? Like, not even to just, like, grow the knight and thin? Please. Unless your hand is, like, mono wastelands. No, it still wouldn't make sense to, like, not activate knight. I'm so confused. <laughs> the, the goblin stream was awesome. Um, it's, it's really good content. Uh, it, it's up on YouTube if you want to check it out later. Like, I'm very, very pleased with how that stream went. Um, after you watch it, check out the, the YouTube comments. Uh, Goblin Lackey 
posted himself about some of the decisions we made afterwards, and it was really useful to read. Yeah, I can link to that one. One sec. Um, there's a timestamp link on accident, but there, there, there's the stream. Just rewind to the beginning. See what this waste landing. Uh, you're, you know what this card does, right? You know what this card does. Use it, please. Like disenchant. Give me a disenchant. Let me ruin this pool. Like I get a card now. Or no, I don't get a card. This doesn't like make mana. <laughs> Kill us! Kill us! Oh. Disenchant. Please. Is disenchant fast enough? Like, I block with a ballista this turn, ping my opponent, return a ballista. Oh yeah, it, it GG because then it enables my pedal to produce mana to like get started. Oh yeah, I'm like we got the other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Disenchant. Disenchant. You don't even have... Come on. Let it happen. Ah. Maybe my opponent won't attack with both of their creatures. Chalice on zero on the other side of the battlefield. So I'm going to play a couple more turns for information here. Because I'm like morbidly curious what else my opponent is going to do that will make Lomer Boy sad. Okay, I'm not dead yet. We maybe didn't need to cast all four spells there. I 
I wanted to cast at least three to have at least one redundant monk for a removal spell. The fourth is questionable. I stand by my decision now that the mentor has been removed. Badlands is so confusing. Also, does he not have, like, Bayou? Because, like, Bayou would let a night activation happen. So I could cast this, get myself prowess. That doesn't matter. So we just chump block again. I'm not getting myself out of this. But Lomer Boy's crying real good, so this is an entertaining stream for me, at the very least. <laughs> Balance would be legit. If I if I had like a an ensnaring bridge I could draw, that'd be pretty pretty legit. Ah, your tree person has arrived. Yeah, Loam's, Loam's really hard to manage your mana. Uh, I'm not going to cycle that and show them that. I'm on zero outs. I put up, like, way more of a fight than I expected, though. Like, let's be real. You're welcome. I'm a good friend like that. While well, my opponent's re-sideboarding, I'm just going to take this uh, moment to thank everyone who's watching today. Hope you're having fun. As a reminder, if you have Amazon Prime, you do get Twitch Prime for free, and that means you can support me without paying money, and everyone wins. Details are below the stream. Uh, I'll be keeping this. How do I want to do this? I think I want to play this out and get a redraw out of it. And I think I'm fine with getting this onto the battlefield. And I think I'm just going to play a city and pass the turn. If we don't get wastelanded, I get a card on turn two. If we do get a wastelanded, it'll take a little longer, but we'll still get a card, and I disenchant to play around this thing. They have wastelanded me. Um, I don't think I'm going to crack the bobble. I think I'm going to leave that there in case I draw artifact land. Then I have like disenchant enabled for this turn. Match has slowed down a lot now. So we'll get end of my opponent's turn, disenchant their Chalice of the Void, hoping not to get wastelanded, because it would be bad. Super Tilt would be wasteland me, I float mana, disenchant that, and then they get like another chalice for zero in their second main phase. Like, ugh, vomit.
Yes, Fatchel, you're right. I could have done that. And that was definitely better than what I did. Karn will take care of Chalice. Huh. Yeah. So I think I, I should have played Ballista for one because that would have turned on the Metal Craft so that I could Karn this turn. Uh, I made a pretty big mistake. Luckily, like the champion that I am, I draw myself out of it. Where do I want to get with this? I could just, like, go for LED now. I think I like that. Because it works with the Salvagers as well, even if the Karn dies. Just winning is pretty decent. My opponent has to do something meaningful this turn. I have two different ways to win the game on the next turn. Hey! There we go. Well, if they have the decay... Hmm. So, like, we can play around decay, but not around another chalice, right? And there's more chalices than decays, so it's better to play around the chalice. There's only two decays. I guess there are two decays and two assassin's trophies, though, so... Kind of a wash. Oh yeah, the Karn does beat the Chalice. Yep, alright. I'm with you, Zach. You're right, you're right. Alright, uh, we got the 5-0. And I didn't even, like, play masterfully. Like, I made plenty of mistakes. Um, Max has called this deck the, like, most powerful deck in Legacy right now. Or oh, somewhat equivalent statements. Um, so I've been super, super, like, excited to play this deck. Um, this is his newest iteration, by the way. Um, so I told him today that I was going to be playing the deck, and, and he sent me this. So, um, let me, let me pull up his messages, because he told me some things when he sent me the deck list. So he, he made some changes. Oh no, there's like a million messages in this chat now. I'm, I'm not going back. Alright, so essentially what he said was he added one land and I think two more cards, one or two more cards from the article because he, he thought that like the deck sometimes could be mana hungry and it wanted a little bit more like inevitability and end game power versus the control decks. So, so that's what this did. Um, this deck feels very, very well refined. Uh, this deck's also hard. Like, sort of weird self-compliment slash loathing at the same time. But, like, I'm, I'm a really good Legacy player, right? Like, I really know my stuff. And I made plenty of errors this week. I got there anyway, but, like, I very clearly made mistakes which could have cost me games. And I powered through anyway. So, um... I don't think I would change a single card if I ran this back. Like, there were some things that we didn't use this league. Like, Containment Priest, for example, we did not use. Um, but I like having access to everything that's here. Let's be real, your last opponent was not good. 
Lumber Boy, I can't think of a single misplay that that that's I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. Uh, yeah, our our opponent was probably new to Loam. Like they they made some errors that let me stay in that game too way longer than I deserved. Like absolutely unquestionably. Um, but, like, as a whole, I really like this deck. I, I think what I like best about it is that you're attacking from multiple angles, right? So you have this Karn, which is, like, essentially a toolbox for your combo and its own win condition over two turns. You have this Karn, which just, like, aggroes people out. You have the Salvagers combo, or you have Mentor, which turns all of these medium cards into, like, not quite, like, blue cantrip level good, because, like, it's not replacing itself at the same pace, but, like, it turns Mentor into a reasonable engine as well. And, like, Salvagers complements a Mentor well. Like, if you have a Mentor in play and then you start going off with Salvagers, you can just, like, kill with a Mentor attack that turn. Like, it's very... Synergistic isn't the quite quite the right word, because like they're disparate ideas that sort of overlap with each other a little bit, and that's really cool. So I think that's all I have to say about this one. Um, if you've been enjoying the content, folks, please follow. Uh, I'm going to be streaming Legacy very regularly, but not necessarily on any set schedule. And if you're really enjoying the content, please consider doing something to financially support this channel, whether it's uh, subscribing for free via Amazon Prime or doing a donation deck list. $12 gets your deck on stream. All right, Spatula of the Ages, that's a great question. Congrats, but why did this deck drop Thought Knots here? So I think Thought Knots here is great in like the Eldrazi and Eldrazi post shells because it is like disruption and aggro. But Karn is also kind of disruption and aggro, right? Like, so this, I think, fills a similar role to what Thought Not Seer was doing previously. Like, this disrupts artifact-based opponents while also, like, being something that your opponent has to go and focus their resources on. So I think they, they fit similar roles. And I think, like... The, the synergy that, like, these cards have with each other is good enough that it outclasses the individual card quality of Thought Knots here. So, so that's my answer to that. Um, Max Storchen would be a great person to direct that question towards as well, um, you know, since he's been one of the people putting in the most time on this deck. All right, folks, uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn you over to E.W. Landon who is, I think, streaming Delver now? Yes, Delver. So, cheers, folks. Have a good day.